friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of February. Hilariously, I just filmed my wrap up for the month of January like two days ago, so here we are. In the month of February, I read seven books for a total of 2,830 pages. And my average rating for the month was 3.9 stars. Granted, I didn't rate three of them because two were rereads. Actually, I didn't rate four of them. Two were rereads, one was a DNF, and one I chose not to rate. Interesting. Okay, uh, let's start with the DNFs. So the DNF that I had for the month was Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. There was nothing wrong with that. I was, I think at like the 12% mark of that during January and I didn't pick it up for about four weeks um, just cause I had other things going on and I honestly didn't care enough to pick it back up. So I figured I'm just gonna pass on that one. Um, and move on with my life. My rereads for February were the same ones I always have in February, Our Chemical Hearts and A Semi-Definitive List of Worst Nightmares, by, both by Crystal Sutherland. Um, I have a full review video for this on my channel, plus I have a, um, I'll link my Goodreads links down below for both of these, um, but also for everything else. But this one has like six updates because I have reread this book six or seven times at this point. This is my favorite book of all time. Um, I could show you the pretty cover, which is right here. The pretty cover lives on my shelves um, directly behind me. So um, as you can tell, this is the one I've annotated. This is the new pretty cover. Uh, so a semi-definitive list of worst nightmares is about Esther who has a family where everyone is supposed to be cursed to have this great fear and that great fear will kill them. She believes that they were cursed by death or the Grim Reaper who met her grandfather in the Vietnam War. This book is overall a romance. I'll, I'll say mostly a vague vibe of a romance, but it's also about um, overcoming your fears, learning that um, sometimes curses are actually just a family full of mental illness. Uh, it has a lot of darker topics that deal with things like um, suicide attempts, suicidal ideation, death of a grandparent, um, death of a parent, um, child abuse, um, stroke addiction, gambling addiction. It's got, a, it's got a lot of darker topics in it. Um, it has some very dark moments, but it has a lot of very bright moments, um, which is where this book is able to shine. I will not stop screaming about this book from the rafters for the rest of my life. It has some fantastic moments and the premise of this, it's, it's like a, it's like a video vlog within it, within a book. And basically our main character, Esther, and her love interest, Jonah, he decides that he's gonna help her overcome her fears. And so he's filming her overcome her fears. Um, every week they pick a different fear from her semi-definitive list of worst nightmares and he takes her somewhere to like try to overcome that fear. And we're following that journey along while also all of this dark shit is happening in her family. I love this book. Again, never stop screaming about it. It is absolutely perfect to me. Equally enjoyable are Chemical Hearts. This has actually since been turned into an Amazon Prime movie, which was actually a really good, uh, fairly faithful adaptation of the book um, that I did really enjoy. Uh, this book is also dark, um, deals with, again, um, finding your first love as a teenager, uh, the way our hearts work, the way that we deal with grief and loss and stress, um, and the way that our friendships and the people who we surround ourselves with um, can really affect our lives for both the better and for the worse. Um, our main character, Henry, is going into his senior year of high school. He is given this position as the co-editor of the school's newspaper. And the girl that is given the other position um, is a new girl to school called Grace Town. And essentially, Grace has a very questionable past so that no one really knows much about her. She's new to the school and she definitely has problems. And throughout the book, we kind of learn what's going on with Grace and what being in love with someone who is that broken can do to you and how you can't save someone who doesn't want to save themselves. I'm going to cry talking about this book. Anywho, um, 
this book, every time I read it, like the last third of it, I just sob the whole time. So <laughs> obviously you should read it. I think I've reread this one four times. So the other book that I didn't really rate was The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison because this book is not written for me. It's not my style. It's not what I'm into. I picked it up because it was the book club book for my local indie bookstore. We're reading books that would have been um, given to us to read during our school years and we're kind of like picking two every month and then voting on them. Um, and this is just not, this is not a book for me. It made me so angry. The fucking, ugh, the spark notes made me angrier than the book. If I'm being honest, um, this is a book about Piccola Breedlove, who is a young black girl um, who prays every day for beauty. She believes that she's ugly. Everyone basically tells her that she's ugly. The whole premise of this book is a giant trigger warning. She is um, raped by her father and becomes pregnant. And it's like the way that society views her because of that thing that happened to her. And I obviously, not my kind of book. Um, last month, the book that we had for this book club also dealt with sexual assault. The book that we have this month is Perks Being a Wallflower, which if you don't know, also deals with sexual assault. And I pretty much said if we have a sexual assault book in April, I'm quitting. So that's where we're at with that. Um, because these books are not written for me, they are smarter than I am. I don't understand half of what's going on. I typically will read a chapter and then read the Spark Notes version to make sure that I understand everything that happened in the chapter and that I have all of the valuable information to move forward. Because a lot of times I'll get to that next chapter and be like, I have no clue because I don't have a clue because these books are not for me. And so I got to the chapter where the incest rape happens. And the whole chapter is talking about Charlie, who is um, Piccola's father. And so we get this whole chapter about his backstory and like the ways that he was humiliated and picked on while he was growing up and all of the things that happened to him and what turned him into the abusive drunk that he is as an adult. And I, as I was reading it, I was like, wow, this really feels like they're trying to make me feel bad for this guy who raped his own daughter, who was 12. Like, I felt like it was trying to make me feel bad for him because you get like his whole backstory and then the thing happens. And so I read through the spark notes and there's like six paragraphs about how, well, you know, they did this because the only way that it was ever going to be bearable for the reader to read this is if we felt a little bad for Charlie and if, you know, we could understand where he was coming from. And I'm like, there's no way, there was nothing on this earth that can make me understand where you're coming from, that you would do that to your own child, any child, any human, let alone a child, let alone your own fucking child. And so, I, like, the person, whoever wrote that Spark Notes article needs to seek mental help. Like, they need a health evaluation. They need to make sure that they're okay. Because I can't, it pissed me off so much I didn't want to finish reading the book. Like, I knew that that's what the book was about going into it. And I understand that that's part of the point, is that hurt people hurt people. I get that. But this is not what I'm here to read. It's not. I, I don't read to have these moments. I don't read to have these moments of difficulty of trying to understand the human condition to know why people are so fucking awful. I read to escape. I read to have fun. Do I read books that make me sob and weep because they are incredibly painful and beautiful and all those things that I just said about these two books that make me cry? Yes, but this fucking shit didn't happen. And I can't, I know it's a real thing. I know it really happens in the real world, but that's not why I read. And I can't understand, I can't, I can't connect to this person who is supposed to be like this scholarly person who's supposed to be explaining this book series or this book to me and have them be like, well, I mean, they did that so that, you know, it would make it okay. And what fucking world is it okay? Um, I know. Now, to be fair to Tony, I have read other books by her that I have loved, but this one ain't it. Also, someone in book club said, why does she only want one blue eye? Anyway, that's where I'm at with that. At a 3.25 out of 5 stars, we have Eye of the World. Ooh, I. Uh, by Robert Jordan. 
I just, it was really long. It was really long. Now, to be fair to this book, to be fair to this book, I started reading it in January and I got to about the 45% mark. And that was like a couple of days left at January. And I was like, well, if I don't read any more, I can read it in February and count it towards Battle of the Girl Bands because it'll be more than 50%. And I was like, that's what I'll do. But then I got sick and I didn't read anything for like 16 days. And then I went back to this book. So this book felt like it took forever, but that's probably because it took me six weeks to read it. So it did take forever. But is that the book's fault or is it just because it took me forever? I don't really know. You know, I love the characters. I love the world building. I'm not a huge fan of traveling books, but I feel like it did okay. Um, my main thing was just that it felt really slow. It felt like every single time these people went into a town, the exact same thing would happen. They would go to a town, they would think they would be safe, something bad would happen, they'd have to run. They'd go to a town, they'd think they'd be safe, something bad would happen, they'd have to run. I feel like this is like Blue's Clues. When we were kids, you know how they play the same episode every day, like Monday through Friday for a week, they'd play the exact same episode? That's what it felt like. So, that's why it's a 3.25. I do plan to continue on with the series. I haven't picked up The Great Hunt yet, um, but it is like something that I need to get to in March um, because I'm actually a month behind now on Wheel of Time books. But yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I like the characters. I like the world building. I like the writing. I just felt like it took forever. You know, I don't even know that I really remember a whole lot to jump into book two, uh, but we're just gonna go for it with all vibes right now. <laughs> My third Crystal Sutherland book for the month was The Invocations. Uh, this is the newest release. It came out in February. Um, this is the Barnes & Noble edition with the pretty pink sprayed edges. I also had an arc of this. I also had a physical arc of this that Bethany sent me. Did I read it prior to release? No, because I was sick and I didn't read anything for 16 days. But I did read it and I gave it a 3.75 out of five stars. This book follows Zara, Jude, and Emmer. Uh, Zara is in high school and her sister died a year prior and she is looking into the occult to try to raise her sister from the dead. Jude did magic that she didn't have the power to do and should not have done and inadvertently cursed herself with a demon and a leg wound from knee to hip that is just open festering wound for years at this point. And Emmer is a witch who can write spells. So essentially in this world, you can write a spell and it can be written on your body, an invocation, if you will. And it basically brings a demon to you. You're basically selling part of your soul for whatever you want. But there are only certain people who can write these invocations. And if you write them incorrectly, like our friend Jude has learned, bad things can happen. Um, and there is a serial killer who is killing women who we find out all are kind of tied to Emma and her invocations. And this book dealt a lot with like the patriarchy because anytime you deal with witches, there's usually something to do with the patriarchy and dealt with, uh, three women who basically oh, three young girls, let's say, um, who have had the shit hand of the stick given to all of them uh, over time in their life and overcoming that, becoming friends and learning how to work together to um, take down the bad guy. And while I enjoyed the story itself, I do feel like the plot was a little predictable um, especially for Crystal, who typically has plots that I don't ever see coming out of left field. Um, it was very, it was very like, just like a pure attack on the patriarchy. And it just felt like it's something that's been done a bunch before. I would have loved to have seen something different at the end, a different twist or a different outcome. Or like, I wish there had just been something more at the end of this book for me. That's not to say it wasn't good. That's not to say it is a bad book and that you shouldn't read it. I think a lot of people have really enjoyed this, but you heard the way I just talked about her first two books. I also really loved House of Hollow. Um, so for me, this is like a fantastic book for like, if you don't, if the, if the author didn't write your favorite book of all time, you may love this book a lot more than what I do, but 
her second book is my favorite book of all time. So like standing up against that is a little difficult. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I still really enjoyed it. I had a good time. It's still a four star book. You know, it's 3.75, which is a four star book. I still really enjoyed it. I had a good time. I like the characters. I would love to see more from this world in the future um, because I like the idea of the invocations and how they operate. So I would love to see more of this world, even if it's not these three main characters. I would love to see these three characters again. Um, but if not them, then more in the world. Something to do with the invocations and like the witch hunters and all of that fun stuff. So. Next out of four stars, we have No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. Uh, this was also, did I have an art for this one? No, I got an early copy, but then didn't read it. Um, 14 years ago, the Palmer sisters, Emma, Julia, and Daphne, left their home in Arden Hills and never returned. But when Emma discovers she's pregnant and her husband loses his job, she has no option but to return to the house that she and her estranged sister still own and where their parents were murdered. Right? Emma's never told anyone what she saw the night her parents died, even when she became the prime suspect, but her presence in the house threatens to uncover secrets that have stayed hidden for years, and the sisters are drawn together once again. As they face their memories of the past, rivalry, rivalries restart, connections are forged, and for the first time, Emma starts to question about what really happened that night. The more Emma learns, the more riddles emerge, and Emma begins to wonder just what her siblings will do to keep the past buried, and whether she did the right thing staying quiet about what was whispered that night. No one can know. So as I said, follows three sisters. Um, the middle sister is our main character, Emma. And she and her husband have just bought this brand new, bigger house. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I got laid off. And she's like, well, that's great for this mortgage. Also, I'm pregnant. And he's like, oh, by the way, I got laid off way before we bought this house. It'll be fine, right? He's a hot mess. Um, I hate him. I don't like him. I hope he chokes on his own spit and dies. Um, her and her sisters have been completely estranged for all of these years since they, um, since their parents were murdered. Um, Emma seen some really weird things that night and she was the prime suspect because she had an older boyfriend and they believe that she, you know, her parents didn't want her to have this older boyfriend, so she killed her parents so she could be with him and also so she could get money and run away. Um, but then she gave away all of the money because her parents were rich. She gave away all of the money that she inherited and people were like, well, that's just guilt money. She was trying to do it to like make people see that like she didn't do it for the money because she didn't keep the money, you know, all the things. And we learn about her sisters, her older sister, her younger sister, their secrets, what they've been doing in the years since their parents died. Everybody comes back to the house and it just becomes like this weird mystery of who did it, why they did it, and God, their parents were awful. Um, it's a domestic thriller. I mean, honestly, if you like domestic thrillers, you will probably like it. If you don't like domestic thrillers, you probably won't. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. I didn't really like the characters because they weren't necessarily likable characters, but I think they were well done. You know what I mean? Um, it didn't really read super fast or super slow. There was interesting things happening. The end was a bit weird, but we're just rolling with it. Um, I had a good time. It was a good book, so... I just enjoyed it. And the last book that I read of the month, which was also my highest rate of the month at a 4.75 out of five stars, was Tender Beasts by Lizelle Sanberry. There is a whole review video for this book that will have gone up just slightly before this. Um, so if you wanna know more of my full thoughts for that, you can check out that video, but I get a 4.75 out of five stars. It follows our main character, Sunny Bear, who has two older sisters, a older brother, a younger brother. Her younger brother is accused of killing his girlfriend like a year prior to when the story takes place. And then other people start dying and the police are trying to pin this all on her brother. Her mother had recently passed away. Her mother told her to protect her brother. And so therefore she's trying to figure out what is actually happening, um, trying to help her brother um, prove his innocence by trying to figure out who's actually doing the murders. And then there's like a weird culty serial killer vibe thrown in on top of it for everything. I had a fantastic time reading this. Lizelle is a fellow author tuber. I will link her down below. If you want to check out more, I will link this book's review along with all of her other um, 
books that I've done a review vlog for because um, the other books I did released a review vlogs and this one I was behind on so it just got a review video um, but it was fantastic I loved it I had a good time highly recommend those are all of the books that I read in February if you made it this far in the video leave me a heart emoji down below preferably a purple one because I like the purple that is all I have for today so until the next video I'll see you guys next time bye